How do I start my own business? Being my own brand would be totally legit. I want to be the next Gary V. My dream is to be on Shark Tank. I'm just gonna Google it. I mean, I'm awesome at social media. What could go wrong? Oh my God. Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for another episode of Learning Curves. We were on a break last week and I'm so excited to be back with my show and I have a very exciting guest, Miss Danielle DeShane from the Caparella Group of Florida. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have you on our show. Um, Danielle, you have such an awesome story. Can you start out by just telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I moved to Sarasota, Florida about 12 years ago. Originally, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, I, Cleveland. Uh, you know, I, Cleveland I'm from Ohio rock. myself. Oh, do, are you? What, yes, what I part? am. I'm from Finley, Ohio. Finley. I know Finley yes. well. I did a lot of horseback when I was younger, so we went around and all the barns, and there were a couple in Finley. Uh, um, what part of Cleveland? Uh, the east side, East Lake, Willoughby. Okay, great. Yes. So... Um, so I started up there and I went to college and during college I went and worked for a company called Steris Corporation, a very large medical company, and started uh, in their corporate accounts division. And then eventually life changes and turns and yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> eight years later, uh, I moved to Florida and moved to Sarasota and fell into government construction. Ooh, government construction. That sounds interesting. It is. A, it's as interesting as it sounds. A lot of red tape, a lot of interesting um, circumstances. You and how did you fall into going from medical into construction? That's a pretty big change. It is. Um, so my medical background is in medical contracts. Okay. So I was hired to do then construction contracts. Oh, okay. And then Makes I sense. was hired, and then it turned into manage these construction contracts. And then it was uh, manage it and do a complete build for us, um, just depending on the project with uh, the county. And I just so literally, I kind of stumbled from paperwork to construction. And so what kind of government construction jobs were you working on? So in Sarasota County, I helped build Benderson Park. It is their large rowing facility right by UTC. I'm very familiar with it. Yes. Yeah, that's so awesome. That was my first project with the county. So I guess construction can be considered different forms of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that was that was making a park. Right. And then it kind of went into um, doing a lot of underground utility stuff, not fun stuff, nothing exciting. And then eventually when I worked for the city of Sarasota, I did the renovation of the Van Wazel. And that was my largest kind of project with um, in, within the government realm. Well, so a lot of site development mm -hmm. and the actual construction of an actual building as well. Yeah, the Van Wazel, yeah, I did building, uh, actual buildings. The Van Wazel was a already existing building, but it went through a quite a large renovation project. Yeah, you did a nice job with that, by the way. Yeah, I, I, love, love, that I love that building. It's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I love going to shows there. Oh, so that, that's great. So from, uh, you were with the government construction. How long were you with them? I was in government construction for about almost six years in total between the city of Sarasota and the county. And then I just kind of, I'm of the, the mind that if you're in government or you're in any form of government, you're kind of in it forever. Mm -hmm. You're a lifetime person. You, yeah, that's you get true. vested, <laughs> you retire, or you it doesn't mesh well with you. I'm not really a red, red tape person. I like very straightforward things. I like moving stuff forward. It got very tedious at times I can and see that. and can be um just it just wasn't my pace. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So then I got into more residential and the private. I went back to private sector, which is really where I flourish. So in the private sector in Sarasota, so what, um, what did you work for, a developer, a builder? Yeah, so I started um, when I was in Sarasota. My first start was with Perone Construction. Uh, Richard Perone started Perone Construction in 1980 and just built a empire for himself. Um, I believe they only do three to five projects at a time. 
but they are projects with a minimum value of at least four or five million um, ultra luxury um, estates. He's known for the celebrities he's worked for, um, the captains of industry, some of the people that he's built houses for, CFOs and CEOs of the largest companies in the world. Um, just amazing stuff. Very cool. Very neat to kind of have unlimited budgets and get to build stuff that most people don't get to do. Right. Yeah, those houses are just amazing when you they walk are. in through those. <laughs> they are. And all over uh, parts of Sarasota, like Siesta Key and Longboat, yeah, that mostly, area. Yeah, Longboat Key mm -hmm. was the home of my largest build I did with him, um, which was 16,000 square feet in uh, the Longboat Key Club. Um, but we did a lot of stuff on Bird Key, mm -hmm. which is my personal favorite area in Sarasota. That's it's right off St. Armand's Circle, correct. correct? It's right before the circle. It's um, It was made famous, I believe, by Lucille Ball. That was where her house was in Bird Key. Really? I didn't yes. know that. That's really cool. <laughs> and they do have quite a few famous celebrities that still live there. Um, I believe the guitarist from Aerosmith lives there, and then Brian Johnson of ACDC lives there. And uh, quite a few of the bigger CEOs of um, just the kind of the, the companies that we see every day. Right. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. And you got to build their houses. <laughs> so tell me about a how uh, uh, when you're a, a house like that. Um, how You said how long does it normally take to construct? So it just depends. Um, typically, it's anywhere from 18 months up to 36 sometimes. I was working on a project that was lasting almost six years at one point. Just a very large house, very detailed. Um, you know, probably would have even lasted longer if we were in the environment we are now right. with COVID, <laughs> where, you know, the simple things that you think you can get, you can't get, let alone those really ultra, like, exclusive things that typically are hard to get, are even much more harder. But, um, you know, I tell everyone the truth is building a $16 million house is very similar to building a 400000 or a $300,000 house. There's a lot more moving parts mm -hmm. um, and a lot more people involved. But the truth is, it is, it's just step A to step B to step C for pretty much any project. Right. You just have a lot more uh, that goes into the house. Mm -hmm. Exactly. As far as all the options and the upgrades and architectural and all features. the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah those are, that's all the fun things. It is. Those <laughs> are, that's one of the reasons I love doing the larger, the more mm -hmm. detailed homes. I love working with the different trades that are just so good at what they do. Um, finished carpentry is such a passion of mine, and it sounds so weird. <laughs> like, I never thought I would say those words. I love finished carpentry. But when you look at what in art it is, and how so few people really do it well now, you can really appreciate it when you see it done well. Oh, I bet. Yeah, because in your typical house, you don't necessarily see that. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, unless someone takes the time to do it for themselves. Mm -hmm. A typical, um, you know, production builder, you, you're not going to get that. Um, and that's what building at a custom level really, that's what kind of defines us, is mm -hmm. you get the details and you get the experience that most don't. Right. Yep. Everything. You can pick out everything. Mm -hmm. All of it made just for you. <laughs> exactly. I love design days. <laughs> Nothing's the same. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's probably make really fun because if you're building the same thing over and over again compared to every project that you have is different in its own way. And I think that is what for me um, is as many hoops as we jump through as custom builders or um, doing something that isn't at a production scale where it's constantly the same thing over and over again, to me, that's what makes it exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you never want to find an issue on a, on a job site. You never want to find something unexpected. But sometimes that's what makes you really good at your job is how you handle those things. And, um, you know, it's things like that. Just my day is not ever typical, and I just love that. Yep. Always solving problems. Exactly. <laughs> Well, and that's not going to happen again. <laughs> or learning from things. Sometimes we learn unintentionally that's in right. certain ways, but then we learn. <laughs> well, you had mentioned um, that you were in Sarasota um, working for this builder. And then from there, you're kind of the, the journey into 
I, I'm yeah. just so impressed by Thanks. your, very, you know, young woman starting her <laughs> own construction business. Yeah. That's very impressive. Yeah, so I worked for Perone, and then mm -hmm. after Perone, I went and worked for a gentleman named Jesse Hostetler with JHM. He was, um, he is a one of the top in his um, field of masonry and concrete contractors, and he wanted to build a luxury. He he's also a general contractor, so he wanted to build a luxury division within his company, mm -hmm. and he had several um, clients that were looking to build very custom. Um, so I then went ahead and worked for him for a while. And then I kind of had always loved St. Pete. And as much as I love Sarasota, Sarasota is very crowded and has changed a lot. And I just saw so much, at least, opportunity up here, especially because St. Pete is so amazing with small businesses. Um, yes, it is. Promoting small business. And some of the things they do and just the festivals. And I just... It, the sense of community is so nice that um, I just was really drawn to it. And so I had, like, the opportunity to come up and do some freelancing for other develop some developers and some builders. And I was like, I want to get to know this area before I kind of figure out where I want to settle down. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with it. Even throughout COVID, when most of everything was shut down <laughs> for a good portion, I still fall in love with, you know, everything, the water to the attractions and just the proximity to even Tampa and be able to go up to Tampa and have dinner with friends. Oh, yeah. It's a great area. It's such a great area. Lots to do. And, you know, you have all the beach towns and both Tampa and St. Peter, both amazing cities. And you're right. I mean, one, one of the great things about living here is we're very small business friendly, Exactly. And small business, so the community supports small business. And for me, I um, I love St. Pete. I love just the eclecticness of even the the buildings. Um, you, hearing about some of the history of the buildings, even downtown St. Pete. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to work for a um, a wood fabricator, and they had been awarded the um, the renovation of it's 200 central mm -hmm. downtown it's the big building downtown with the big clock at the top yes so a couple of years ago we went ahead and he commissioned me to help lead that project so it's so cool to be able to walk through a building and be like oh I did that <laughs> like yeah you know a couple of years ago, I did that I bet that's, that's pretty neat <laughs> that is neat <laughs> but that's like that's what I mean like St. Pete has those opportunities because of some of the culture behind it like the old northeast walking down the streets of it it I it reminds me of back home in Cleveland it just the brick streets yes. and the older buildings and some of the colonials it's just really cool yeah no I love the houses in old northeast they are so cool yeah, very, very unique and different. They are, and that's that's kind of what I like about it. Like you said, it's not nothing's cookie cutter. Right. At CEA Marketing, we take your business, your passion, and your why, and we sell it. If you're unsure where to start marketing your company, CEA Marketing is here to help. Our team at CEA has tons of experience and top-notch training, which helps you take all the stress and confusion out of marketing your own business. After years of working with large companies like Pulte Homes, the Outback Bowl, and Metro Places, we guarantee the successful implementation of a marketing strategy. So after you figured out you wanted to live in St. Pete, you're here for a little bit. And so I'm here for a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, COVID happened and you learned to pivot. So I um, ended up working for several different builders, helping them build their business, kind of looking at what they were and were not doing correctly from a project manager standpoint. Mm -hmm. And where were they maybe losing money compared to where their projects were ending up, where they where they originally forecasted versus where they ended and really helping them streamline their processes. And as I did it and I was, you know, doing some more complicated work, I just really took back, looked back at some of the builders I worked for and who did what right. Like whose clients were really happy and mm -hmm. whose subcontractors were really happy to work for them. Because to me, as a builder, I have internal and external clients, right? So mm -hmm. I have the clients that pay me, and then I have 
the clients I pay, right? which are my subcontractors, which if I didn't have them, I would have nothing. I love that word, internal client. And that's how I've always looked at them. Anyone that I yeah. do business with. I love that. I just think, um, I think it's, a, you need to be as grateful for the people you do be, work side by side with as the people you work for. Absolutely. Um, there's been many times I've called my electrician and said, I screwed up maybe, or I overlooked something. Is there any way you could do this for me? And nine times out of 10, they're there to help. Mm-hmm. And it's because you just take the extra time to just, they are, they're, they're as, as, as important to me as my actual clients or the people that I work for. Yeah, they tend to work harder for you. They do. And they'll be there for you when you need them, even if they're really, well, for you, even if they're really busy. And, you know, I found that with all of my subcontractors, I'm, like trying to understand even though I don't have to as a builder, I don't have to understand why a pipe is ran a certain way, right? Plumbing is not my forte. They're the experts. They tell me how they should do something and, Mm -hmm. you know. But I think it's appreciated that I want to know why because I do want to know why. I always want to get better as a builder. My clients pay more of a premium over some builders because of that, that I'm always knowing what's going on, um, a lot of my clients are out-of-town clients. Um, I do a lot for people with their second homes. This might be a vacation home for them. Mm-hmm. We just got done doing a renovation at the Tides in North Reddington to one of the penthouses. That was that couple's third house. Um, it is a vacation home. They live up in, I think it's uh, Green Bay area. So um, a big part of it is like that communication that being able to, you know, talk to a client that's not there every single day, having that trust, making sure they know that you're always right there, it's so important. Oh, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of builders make is sometimes they tend to hide from the customer. Yeah. Or they're not always completely transparent with them about... The cr- a current situation or a problem. You know, I think, um, you know, I think in business, in any business, not just construction, your personality might go against your industry a little bit. So if you're more of an introvert and yet you have to be in front of a customer all the time, it can be hard for you, mm-hmm. right? right? So a lot of times those people hire people that are better at that yes. than <laughs> them. And that's where, that, you know, um, for me, our, our at currently... Our um, company, Caparella Group, we are an ultra luxury builder. Um, we we specialize in typically five to seven projects at a time, uh, ranging in size. Um, but the reason we do that and we do cap how many projects we'll take on is I learned from the beginning people really appreciate when it comes to their home that is typically their number one investment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the most personal thing you could possibly own, typically. Yes. People look at their homes. I mean, that is what you've worked for. That is your investment. That is what shows what you've done in your life, basically. Yes. And so being more personal, I think it typically lets people feel just easier at eat with the process. Because building is not easy. Um, I tell all my clients. Not easy, and it's very stressful. <laughs> at some point. Mm-hmm. During the process, you probably will get mad at me or you will get frustrated. It might not even be at me, but it might be with, hey, permitting's taking longer because Mm -hmm. it does at the moment because of COVID. Yes. Or materials are lacking because it just, sometimes it seems like everything is there that you need it. And other times you walk into Home Depot and they're out of everything you possibly needed for that day. Um, But during that, just being open and honest and keeping the communication, I think that is for builders because our jobs are very manual a lot mm-hmm. of times, that the people that are really good at the manual aren't as good at the behind the scenes things, the communication, the organizing. Um, and that is one thing that I kind of took from each little, not little, but each person I worked for. I took how did they do something really well or how did they figure that out? Um, 
Perone was amazing when it came to his the 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 systems he's put in place, how he does things on a construction level at on the job sites is better than anyone. No one gets better. You walk on his job site and you could sit down and eat a meal and feel like you were at your your dining room table. His job sites are immaculately clean, and there's reasons for it. You know, there's reasons for safety. And also materials expensive, keeping it a certain way, making sure that, you know, someone doesn't drop something that can't be replaced. Right. Because it happens, especially on his homes. There's, <laughs> a, there's certain things that can't be replaced if it's broken. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was so great at his systems. And then when I worked for Jesse, Jesse was such a great people person. And he, he, and he paid me to put systems in place to help him out. Uh-huh. And he was just so, Jesse was so very understanding. He was much more um, accessible. So I saw where the clients really liked that. Uh-huh. And so, and then I worked for some builders that were on the other spectrum, not that great, didn't treat their clients well. And I had to part ways because to me, well, my business is my my biggest priority in my life. I don't have children. It is my baby. Um, it is what I think about pretty much 24-7. So to mold something or to create something, it really had to be about, I needed to take what I've learned to make something that I think is a better product. I don't, I'm not saying I do it better than others. I think I have a better product to give, though, mm-hmm. during it. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's a really all about learning curves, you know, kind of going in and before you start your business, thinking about all those things, the people that you worked for, what was great and what wasn't great. And sounds like you had a a different type of experience with the different people that you've worked for in the past to help you mold yourself into the builder that you are today. Well, and I think the biggest thing is, and we touched on it previously, was, you know, it's it's not all e- always easy to give certain um, answers. Some answers people aren't going to like hearing. Some mistakes do happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one of the most wonderful superintendents. He's just goes above and beyond, and when he makes a mistake, he really does take it pretty personal, and I just have to say to him, we all make mistakes. We're human. If You, you wouldn't have done it if you knew that's how it was going to turn out, right? Mm-hmm. So we just have to figure out how to fix it. In building... Most things are fixable. Yes. They just are. They are. <laughs> you know, You're right. as long as no one got hurt and we're all okay, we mm-hmm. can figure out how to backtrack and, and make it right. And um, that was a big thing. So for me, one thing is communication. The other is always make it right. Um, always be upfront. Uh, I think that's one thing that my clients really like about me is I talk kind of like like we're talking now, yes. you know, very personable. I really appreciate their time. A lot of my clients are people that are doctors that have really crazy schedules mm-hmm. or they have other, they have multiple companies and we only have so much time. So if I can make it easy, make it understand, like understandable, it seems like it goes over. Even if you have to tell someone something hard to hear, as long as you say it and you come from a place of, okay, this might, for lack of better words, suck, but <laughs> we'll get through it. Right. I have a plan. So whenever I do bring news that my clients don't like or something that maybe is like, hey, the schedule's pushed back because of X, Y, and Z, I also bring a plan. Like, but we've already thought about it. This is the best way of dealing with it. Yep. That's a great way to do it, too, mm-hmm. is coming in with a plan afterwards. Don't just give them the bad news and... Exactly. Put it out there. <laughs> exactly. But have something that you can tell them to ease their mind mm-hmm. and know that you have it handled in the long run. Yes. Yes. Smart. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So many so many things that you're saying that you're doing with your clients that are so important. And I think a lot of the things that you mentioned are really true for most businesses. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. like uh, like I said, it's not always COVID has, especially COVID, it has affected everyone in certain ways. Yes. Um, you know, I don't own a restaurant business, but I know they're, what they're dealing with in certain ways is very similar to what I'm dealing with. They're dealing yes. with lack of, of labor at times. They're mm-hmm. dealing with lack of materials or, or cost of materials. And, um, 
you know, business advice can be very interchangeable. I, I love talking to anyone that has a business and picking their brain, especially if the business has been around for a while. Yeah. Because um, recently I was talking to a girl. She's a, an amazing designer and St. Pete interior designer. And we were talking about some commonalities we have, even though our businesses are kind of similar in some mm-hmm. ways. Um, just being a newer business owner, and I asked her some question. I'm like, did you ever feel like this? And she's like, a million times, because she's been doing it now for six years. So the first year or two, it felt that way. Yes. You know? And although I've been building in, in Sarasota and St. Pete for seven or eight years now, my company is newer to the area. Yes. So I am I am feeling, again, it's so crazy, those those angsts and those pains of growing and mm-hmm. and tr- and second guessing yourself again. It, you can be as um, self confident and assured as in like one role, and then step into a new role, and you go right back to like that first day in kindergarten. Oh yeah, you sure do. <laughs> you sure do. You know? I know that. Um, you know, I mean, I remember. I'm not. It wasn't that long ago. You know, I ran how many construction companies, and I can walk in and I will say, I'm the best at what I do. I know what I'm doing. You have to listen to me. And I can say that with confidence because I've been doing it for so long, but the minute I own my own company, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't know if we should go out. I don't, it's raining outside. Like, you literally go back to kind of questioning a whole bunch of stuff and Mm -hmm. you're rebuilding, and that's where um, it's important to talk to other people and I don't know, you can have those feelings, but sometimes just knowing those feelings are valid right. really helps. Oh, it does. Yes. Having those conversations and feeling that you're not alone because owning a company can be very lonely sometimes, especially when you get caught up in your thoughts, like you just mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> because your head does awful things to you sometimes. <laughs> well, it does. And, you know, I and sometimes it, it's, and that's, I think that's, a good thing too though mm-hmm. it, it keeps us down at a, it not keeps us down at a certain level but it keeps us reminding us that not everyone does it right 100 percent of the time right i mean elon musk makes mistakes yes we just don't see them right. you know <laughs> it's kind of like everyone in business you only see that facebook or that instagram vision of what they put out there yeah I mean, so many of my girlfriends have been so supportive and so wonderful. And, you know, recently a one I haven't talked to for a while was like, oh, my gosh, you're killing it. You just look so great. All your projects look awesome. You just must be, yeah, you don't see, unfortunately, you know, the hours or the nights that you don't sleep. And, you know, oh, my gosh, I, you know, how can I make this better for my client? You know, mm-hmm. or all the different things you deal with on a daily basis. Yeah. The outside Instagram for any small business owner looks a lot better than the inside. Oh, right. Because <laughs> yeah. most of some, some of our days are not so good. <laughs> no, there are some days I, I'm like, yeah. why did I why did I get out of bed today? Yeah. Why did I just not just put that cover over, right? But right. Um, but I think that's, that's like you said, it's, it is a learning curve. Mm-hmm. You take the good with the bad and... Um, You know, I love, I like to listen to Brene Brown. She's one of my favorite people. I love her TED Talks and things. Yes. And one thing she she talks a lot about is sometimes you have to sit in sadness to appreciate happiness. Right. Sometimes you have to sit in those moments of doubt or the moments of um, just pure scared, pure fright. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know if tomorrow will be okay. Mm Mm-hmm. But... It's so in those moments you sit in that, that when you have those victories, you can really appreciate them. Because I think as business owners, we don't celebrate our victories enough. No, we, we don't. O- we overlook them like, okay, that was a hoop. I got through it. I jumped through it. <laughs> I got through it. Where's the next hoop? Yep. And we don't go, wow, I can't believe I got through that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like somehow all those years of college or life lessons, somehow I was able to persevere. Yep. And um, I just really, I love that. I love, like, hey, sometimes it's okay to sit there and really kind of go, wow, that really wasn't fun. Because you then, those days that you can go, I really did something cool. Yeah. It's important. And it's kind of interesting because sometimes you think that uh, I have, like, we had this big client that was our client for probably 10 years and, you know, I've, I've owned my company for 25 years and I, I, you know, I tell, I talk a lot about on the podcast and also, you know, advise other people that, you know, you have these peaks and valleys in your company and even 
when you've been around as long as I have, you have those, you have that time, you have those moments of self self doubt, you know, especially when you've been doing, you know, with somebody for so long, or maybe those fears of, oh my gosh, well, what's going to happen when they go away, Mm -hmm. you know, but you know, it's going to happen at some point, you know, especially for my type of business, right? Because clients come and go all the time and for all, all kinds of different reasons. Um, but this particular case, you know, changing of the guard, that type of person, okay, here it comes, you know, and you have to like prepare yourself for it. So it's going through, for me, it was like this whole mental thing of what's going to happen afterwards. Yeah, sure. But what you don't realize is, is that, hey, if this, you've had this big, huge company that's taken over your business, it's preventing you from, you know, probably taking on other types of business that would be more of a better fit for you yep. or work better for you. But you're, you've just been doing it for so years because you become comfortable with it. Um, but sometimes letting, letting go of that idea of this is going to be a terrible thing if they go away. Yeah. Um, once I got in my head that I was ready to let it go, it was amazing, and this happens every time to me too, right? Yeah. But every time I kind of go, oh my god, I start freaking out. And as soon as that door closed, instantly, like five new clients, the perfect match for our company, just, just came right into the door. I mean, they and they could not be. They are like the best type of clients, clients I wish for every single day. Yeah, and that's what we have right now. And I was just like you know, just fighting these demons in my head. And it's just, I, so listening to, you know, your head can make you think a lot of things and it, and it scare the crap out of you, you know? It can. <laughs> it can. And, you know, and it's, and it's all about energy and what you let in and what you mm-hmm. let out. And I completely understand that. I have some clients that I've been doing multiple projects for. If I can clone those those people, I wish I could, so I could have every client be like them. I know they're just wonderful. They're easy to. They're easy. They're they're appreciative. They're always asking me, "When is our next draw? When can we pay you next?" And I'm like, "I'll let you know." You right. know, yeah. but it's 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 a, just a really nice and easy. And it it's amazing when you find those clients. It's like, how? Can, why isn't it always like this? Right. And and you don't know why all the time, but it isn't. And you do have sometimes difficult clients, or you'll have a client that is a little more hand holding and I'm someone who I, I appreciate that and I, I do that but you don't realize how much it does take away from other parts of your life or other places that you could open up some more time for that could take you even further yeah and you find out that you know those certain types of clients are okay you know kind of take note of that mm-hmm. and um, you know trying to get in the point where have them having an interview process, like they're interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them. So make sure that, hey, is this going to be a good fit? I mean, with, you know, client that I have, when you have like been with us, like my particular case, we had several like different people. We were there with them for 10 years. Um, But over time, you know, you're going to have that one new person that comes in that's not going to match how you do things, right? So that's going to happen. But it's just interesting the few new ones that just came in like were just like what I wanted in my head and I think um, it's good for you to think about those things I guess because it does take a lot of time when you're working with the wrong customer yeah it can be a big huge time suck well (laughs) it can just it can it can to be honest with you it can suck it all the way around suck the life out of you you. for them because Mm -hmm. the truth is it it might not be them and it might not be you it just is not a good combination yes um, most of my clients are referrals. Most of my clients come from past clients or someone I that had referred a friend to me that it was great, so then they refer someone, you mm-hmm. know. Um, the one client I, I took on a job reluctantly, not reluctantly, I shouldn't say that. She was going to be, she was going to look at, to be with another builder and then someone had stepped in and said, listen, I, you really need this person instead. And I took on that job, and it just wasn't a good match. It was really nothing about that person or me. It just, it, it just, she has built with other builders. She has a different style than I do, and that's fine. And we got through, and the, and the job was fine. And I think, I, I don't think anyone else would know that there was some, not tension, but it's just, there, it was a, not a mesh, right. if I can say it mm-hmm. the best. Nothing bad, it just wasn't a mesh. 
And it was a weird process, and I kept saying to my mom or my friends, like, oh, that, this is really getting under my skin. Not just the person necessarily, but just the whole process because it made everything so much harder than it had to be. Right. Like, if the communication isn't there, uh, it, it just isn't, you know. And I, and I kicked myself for taking her on as a client. I, I double and triple thought about it before I even did because she's probably the one person I never interviewed. As a client. Right. Uh, she was only in town for a short period of time. We got together very fast. She signed a contract. We got to moving. There was no building up of, like, getting to really know each other. Right, and especially with a big custom project yeah. like that, you probably really need to know what exactly. you're getting into with each you other. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I'm not... Uh-huh. I, I, so I have a, um, I have a, a business partner. She owns... A, she's a female roofer. One of the only... I think there's three in Florida, Okay. And I have to explain to her, hey, for your, <laughs> oh, she's awesome. I go, it's so much different for you than for me. For her, she gets in and gets out in three days. So, you know, she's met her client. They sign their proposal. They do the demo. They do the roof. They do the inspection. Mm-hmm. She's gone. I'm literally in a relationship with these people yes. for years. Yes, you are. <laughs> and no one understands, like, if you don't, until you really like, me understand. Me too, like with my clients, yeah. You don't understand until you mm-hmm. understand. And you're going through something so personal, building a home and a high-end home. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a different beast in general. Um, so, yeah, so I... It has to be a match. It, it does. And, yeah. and so I will say this. I I do interview my clients as much as they interview me, but I let them know that. Like, mm-hmm. this has to feel good because even if you super love me, it doesn't mean that I'm going to think I can work with you. And, um, it, you know, it sounds... I think the best builders do that, though. I think the best people in any industry does that. They just like they consider their internal and external customers who they are. You know, I'm doing business with this person, but I'm still doing business with, with this person. Mm-hmm. I think you, you have to, as a as any business owner, go ahead and really take a look at not, who, not only who do you do business with, but who do you do business for. Right. And yeah, it makes a big, it, it's, so, it's such good, uh, it's such great advice because if you take on these clients that you're that don't match with your personality or your company's personality or your culture, it's going to be a complete nightmare. And I know I've had that happen several times. And every time that I've taken on a client, when my gut told me don't do it, yes. or when, my, when I've stayed with a client, when my gut told me you need to get it out of this situation. Every single time I regretted it <laughs> and it's just been, and then I've just all this wasted time and I could have been doing something else and caused so much stress for not only myself, but my employees that well, work for, for me, yeah, for, for everybody that's involved in the situation, it causes stress for, and the client itself, they're stressed out as yeah. well. Well, and I think so. it's, you know, it, exactly. It's just not, it, a good fit is just not a good fit. It's almost like having chemistry with someone, mm-hmm. right? You just have it or you don't. It either works or it doesn't. And um, and so that's why, you know, when, when I have meetings, so my typical client takes anywhere from, I would say, 60 to 90 days to sign with me. Um, we have lots of meetings usually before we even enter into a contract, um, design meetings, trying to find maybe an architect for them, depending, or an interior designer, mm-hmm. or, you know, even a piece of land, the preparation work can start way before they become your official client, quote unquote, right? Um, and that's the buildup that I like to see, you know, and a lot of times, it isn't even about that they're the perfect client or the not perfect client. They it's just about how you see someone handle stuff, and you get mm-hmm. to know what works for them. Um, I have had several high, high-end clients that I have signed many NDA N- NDAs for, um, and you know, it, it they work differently than some other people that aren't at that level, right? right. But you kind of tailor yourself to that, and you just understand what works for that person and what doesn't. Um, and then you'll have another client where that treating them like that other client would be super offensive to them, maybe right. being a little more hands-off and letting them do their own thing because they're so busy. 
and just taking care of stuff for them without really letting them know every detail. Then I'll have another client that'll be like, well, I want to, you know, I need to know everything. It's just how you tailor yourself to each individual person. You don't have to like that person. You don't have to get along with them, but can you do business with them? Right. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. No, there's a big difference between that. And I love what you just said is make tailoring. You can't do business the same way with every customer. You can't. And I have to really listen to their needs and understand how they work. And I think in the post-COVID world we're in, I think that's what like a lot of the big corporations, the Fortune 500s, are really learning. You know, they had all these people that did a certain thing certain ways for so many years, and then that certain way wasn't able to be done anymore. We couldn't go into our cubicle every day. We couldn't mm-hmm. have those meetings face-to-face where we talked through discussion and things. And it had, they had to pivot. And I think in that, we found that corporate culture has changed around the board. More yes, companies are becoming more personable with their employees than not. That's and, true. Um, and so for me, I'm on, like, the extreme side of that, right? <laughs> yeah. We're super personal. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're in their home or we're building their home. Um, I will say that most of my clients do become friends. Yeah, so do mine. I'm it, friends with most of my clients as well. And you try, like, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a dancing act a little bit, mm-hmm. right? But it's it's wonderful. It's To me, it's wonderful to have someone call me up and say, oh, you know, would you mind stepping by? I think, you know, we might have an issue with something, and oh, we just, we, we only trust you. Mm-hmm. The, the huge compliment, I will always stop by. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? <laughs> you that's what they that's what they're looking for when they come to me. They're looking for someone to just take the reins and go. Yes. And to have a certain level of confidence. Um, but I, like I said like I said, it's it's a culture that started probably in the small business realm and I've seen it kind of creep up as like these companies have decentral tie you know they, they're not you don't have your corporate headquarters anymore a lot of times you're in your home mm-hmm. and you're calling in and you're talking to your coworker in california yep very different it is <laughs> it is very different for sure and i love the fact you know the clients i think most of my clients that have become friends of mine mm-hmm. they are either clients for life like no matter where they move mm-hmm. to they always okay i just moved to this new building company you know when I work with Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> so I was at change of the guard. They always pull me with them. <laughs> just yeah. like sometimes we get pushed out because that company has, you know, their favorite agency that they work for. But I just love that because when I become friends, I know that I've created a new ambassador because not only where they bring you with you, you with them everywhere they go, but they also refer other people to you. So the more you can learn about your clients and you know, become friends with them, Mm -hmm. they really will work work with you for the rest of your life. Well, and I think in the Tampa Bay area, or in Florida in general, Mm -hmm. we all, a lot of us are not from here, right? Right. So we have, like, we kind of rely more on learning about other people and who they are about and stuff, you know, because you, that's how you meet people. That's how you meet referrals or, or possible opportunities is by joining a woman in business group like I have mm-hmm. or, um, you know, I, there are several charitable groups I'm both on boards of or members of or, sp- or a sponsor of. And it's not just um, stuff that you're interested in. It's also becoming part of your community. And then also, like you Absolutely. said, it, it opens your referral basis. It opens up your, you know, ability to make new people or new friends that eventually could become clients. Yep. You know, I do have some friends that have become clients. <laughs> and I've had some clients that have become friends. And I just really, I I adore that. Like, I just, um, it, like, it, it's my business is so personal as it is, the fact that I can take that and bring it into, quote, unquote, real life, not just business life. It's nice. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. I love that. It's so great. Well, I think we're running out of time awesome. to, to wrap up. I've, been, I've, I've enjoyed this conversation so thank much. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. It has. Well, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you joining Learning Curves. And thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. 
Pencil Studios is a full-service production studio with capabilities for photo, video, podcasting, editing, co-working, and more. Our photo video studio has a number of different backdrop choices and props to choose from. We also have a gourmet kitchen set, or if you're an upstart podcaster, you'll love our four-person podcast studio. So what are you waiting for? Visit SecondSoulStudios.com to book a tour today.